Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of blow card catfishes, also known as plecos, whiptail catfishes, L numbers within the aquarium trade. And today I'm going to talk about uh, a fish food, so kind of going back to my, some of my uh, fish food review videos because I bought uh, well one of the diets that I really wanted to try again and feed to my discus actually. So I actually trialled this food back in, um, it'd probably be two, 2000, uh, 2022, 2023, and this is the Fish Science Discus Pellet. So I was trialling it to see how it worked, um, the fishes before it came out, and then I sent a little review about them back then. And this is actually one of the best dry diets I ever found when I was feeding it back then and of course because it was in the development stages it it wasn't available afterwards uh, well when I went out and then I would have to then I went back to sort of tetra and other things for a dry diet that kind of covers that sort of basis so luckily I this has come out and I've now managed to buy it so these are the di uh, yeah the discus pellets and Fish Science is a UK brand, they do do quite a few different uh, products and brand, um, for different fishes. Uh, some are a little bit uh, like I don't agree with adding wood into lower carb diets, there's no point, so the wood based uh, pleco food pellets, wafers. But this is actually really good and it's for dry diet, actually tries to closely replicate the wild diet of discus, uh, symphysodon. So what they consume most in the wild, we know they're largely detritivores, largely algivores, feeding on algae, bacteria, detritus, with a little bit of invertebrates, and they, no fish or any sort of larger like carnivorous diet. So of course it's really difficult to actually get a diet that actually replicates a diet. This is kind of vaguely close, but the closest when it comes to dry diets. So it's a traditional pellet, um, if I pour some, and then you can kind of see there, but I'll show you closer up later what it actually looks like. And it's quite dense uh, for how much you get, it feels quite heavy, uh, you know like some flakes and crisps where right? you don't feel like you get as much in the pot. Um, but in general it's a really good diet, they will feed on it, yes they're brown pellets, there's a common misconception that discus will only feed on red foods. They don't, um, but they can be a bit funny with dry foods. And this is one that I had really good success with. That they take two straight away. So anyway, I think the main thing will be to look at the ingredients and really try and understand what this diet contains and why. This is the front of the packaging. It's quite simple, easy, nothing uh, particularly fancy. Sometimes fancy packaging, it feels like you're mostly paying for the packaging rather than for a quality diet. So it just says what it is. Um, natural formula of insect meal. So that's where it does differ from a lot of diets. There's not that many that do are ba insect based. There is obviously fluval, which has a lot of fish meal, um, usually anyway. Um, but it's, this uh, brand has been doing insect based diets, I think maybe before actually probably long before uh, Fluval does, so it's very similar in some regards. Um, but I think the most interesting thing will be most of the So I did say what discus actually consume in the wild, and you might notice that it kind of differs. So this is largely insect meal. If for proper like natural, natural discus diet, you'd want largely um, algae based. The other thing is, is whether they're going to eat that insect, um, going to eat that algae based diet, which would be really difficult. Um, they might not feed on it. It's, it doesn't mean it's not good for them if they don't feed on it. It just might be a bit tricky to get the meat. But there's quite a few different insects here. Um, invertebrates which actually oh yeah insects and invertebrates which makes it a little bit more varied up to 36% so the rest of the diet kind of fills in from there. Peas I'm not entirely a big fan of peas they're quite difficult to digest 
Um, but you could say replicate some aspects of detritus for them. Um, it's a little bit more, I, I kind of see it as largely a filler, it's not really got as much nutritional purpose, but it's not the worst. Mycoprotein is protein from fungi, that's great. They probably are consuming fungi in the world, it's really difficult to say because that detritus isn't always subdivided. Um, yeast, so that's another one that's probably not too far from their wild diet and does have some nutri- well it does have, both of these have nutritional value but it does kind of up, there's a lot of upping the protein um, volume because what a lot of people are looking at is the protein rather than actually thinking what makes up the protein which I think is more important. Then we've got shrimp meal, kelp, um, they have salmon oil, uh, the kelp is a seaweed so that's probably, I would have liked more of that. But it's good they have actually included it anyway. And then salmon oil, shrimp protein, carabine. I don't really know much about carabine, but I assume that's another sort of very protein rich. Spirulina. Lots of these ingredients also come with kind of aspects um, of promoting colour. Uh, colour enhancers, which is something that fish science is really big for, but a lot of brands contain so many different colour enhancers. What I wouldn't be doing is it feeding this probably to yellow discus. They probably would go a brighter, um, a different colour. They're not going to stay yellow. And I think some of the white discus. The one I'm not keen on is tannins, because tannins are sort of anti pro, or well, anti nutritional, um, cause issues of protein take up. And it doesn't really have really any benefit to adding it. So we have got obviously protein reasonably high. It's not so high that probably lots going to be wasted, but probably some given they're not actually carnivores. Um, ash content, as I've said before, that is not actual ash being added. That is the mineral content. You'll see the two terms used being used sort of interchangeably. Moisture is just moisture just gets in there and it kind of will affect how long this is going to store. We've got the extra vitamins and minerals. So it's not actually like, it's a lot better than the sort of traditional fish meal cereal, uh, vegetable, starchy sort of diet. But it's but it's kind of better I think because it's got that higher insect volume, which I don't think for Fluval we actually know, so just checking. So Fluval, I've got here bug bites, has 38% insect by love, they say that's just one species. So this is kind of a little bit lower for the insect protein and ideally I would have had not as much, but I wouldn't have, um, this has a lot more, if it will focus. Um, cereals and stuff like that. So like potatoes, wheat, the, like the salmon as well. The, uh, the fish aren't going to be taking up as salmon or fish in the wild. It, they won't be able to take up as much of the nutrients from it. So thinking about what there is going to be wasted from what they aren't really evolved to process. But in general, I think this is actually quite a good food and I, it's why I recommend it as a dry food and then build up with other things like frozen foods. Um, it's really difficult with it, um, discus and their wild duck being mostly algae based because they are a bit funny with eating certain foods. So um, I am having reasonable success with nori as well, so adding nori. Um, in the tank and they feed on that. Um, it's easier with shoals than with pears. If you've got a pear, they tend not to get that swarming feeding action. All it takes is one individual to feed. Um, but it's largely a good diet. And I would, yes. So it's very good, I find, for getting discus to put weight on. You don't need as much of it to put weight on. There's a lot less wasted. Um, it's very good for colour and they do feed on it particularly well. I did like, I swear the original ones had slightly larger pellet size because this is, as I said I'd show, it's like that, which is fine because if you've got baby discus, 
they are going to want a smaller pellet size and although lobsticks have very robust frangel jaws uh, to chew things discus aren't really the best in that department because they're mostly feeding on algae and detritus so their secondary pairs of jaws are more similar to like trophius where they're a little bit more fine they're not very good at chewing harder food items because they're not really evolved to do that so a larger pellet size or harder food item is not going to be immediately as beneficial, I think, uh, from a like, biomechanical standpoint as other cichlids. So a smaller pellet size or one that soaks quite easily or flakes or nori or stuff like that isn't as much like, I would, don't think about it from like, a mechanical standpoint. And their jaws are evolved very much for picking off food items off the um, off the surface like wood, rocks, mostly probably wood but or off substrate, something like that. So anyway, I end this here and I can review other diets, it's just I need to get them. And some diets is whether I have them to hand, like this one I bought because I thought it was good. Whereas others I'd just be buying for a video and not feeding to my fish unless it's kind of like I need something at the time. So most I have a lot of like empty food packets for reviews but uh, other things I do want to review Vitalis but it's a little bit pointless because there's no, no merits to feeding Vitalis. It's the same as any other... Um, it's the same as just going to buy ground bait for fishing. But this is a really good that and a brand kind of to follow it is bay uh, so it was originally run by a scientist uh, who was really into fish nutrition particularly the color aspect um hence the name science don't confuse it with aquarium science it's nothing related um so anyway i end this here if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and goodbye